Is this lady making all Chinese people look bad by not wanting to repay back the climbers that helped save her life on Mount Everest? Let's talk about it. Yeah, man. Is she making Chinese people look greedy? And was that a pre-existing stereotype? Is it an internal stereotype? Is it a global stereotype? And we got to talk about it because this article about Liu getting saved by two Sherpas and finding shares going viral, Andrew, not just in America, but of course, also China as well. And we got to break down the comments, our own takeaways about it because Andrew, even such a uh, interesting, almost like sports expedition topic has a lot of macro stereotypical takeaways from it. All right, let's get into it. David, what exactly is the story? Just so everybody gets the facts right, because I do think that there is some confusion about what's going on here. Yes, the Western version of the story is very different from the China internal, more accurate story. Long story short, there's a 50 year old woman named Leo Amber. She works at a bank. She's got like, saves up 40, 50, $60,000, goes to Nepal to climb, climb Mount Everest on the Nepal side. She went up before her Hunan climbing team. She got stuck on the way down. She's about to die freeze to death she lost a mitten but two people from her climbing group that kind of know her not really know her come up with their sherpas and they see her dying and basically they're like all right let's try to help her so they try to help her but one of the sherpas is like hey man it's kind of dangerous for us i'm only paid to protect you shia so shia this guy offers him 10,000 usd to save her they bring her down safely and then they finally give the Sherpas the money, right? They pay out. But then Liu, the woman, doesn't want to pay them back. Mm. So that's the accurate version of the story, Andrew. But in the West, it's going super viral because it looks like Liu, the woman herself, didn't want to pay the Sherpa who carried her on his back all the way down the mountain. Right. The actual dispute is between the Chinese people. It's between the Fan and Xie and Liu. The Sherpas got paid. Right. The two climbers who decided to front the rescue money, and then now she's not paying them back fully. She only paid back $4,000 versus $10,000. Right, but she did tip the Sherpas eighteen hundred dollars each. So she, so by the way, guys, I think that that's the biggest point of dispute. Andrew, in the Western version of the story, the Sherpas okay. didn't get paid and didn't get a thank you. In the actuality, it's Fan and Share that are missing it. Right. Uh, a couple things come to mind before we get into the comments section, David. A lot of people are wondering: Will this affect future Chinese climbers? from getting help because they know that if you help a Chinese climber, you're not going to get paid back. Also, I do want to ask this, that they didn't have to help her, but it was the right thing to do that they helped her. Now, what if they had just left her to die, which they could have as people who hired Sherpas. She didn't hire a Sherpa, so she cheaped out. But I'm saying if they let her die, then does the story come out saying, oh, fellow Chinese left a Chinese climber to die. Chinese people are so greedy. No and humanity, can't help each other. right? Yeah, I think that to be honest, it could go either way. And that kind of goes onto this whole like negative press macro down wave stream that a lot of Chinese things are getting micro to macro. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, Andrew, breaking in everything down. This is so complicated, but you know, Andrew, hop, hop boys, we get into the nitty gritty of it. Somebody said, so Chinese, typical mainland Chinese logic. This is the most Chinese thing ever. Man, my mom would probably do something like this. Ha ha ha. And somebody said, man, there is some truth to Chinese being bad tourists. But of course, some Chinese people said, and this is on the Western version of the article, please, this doesn't represent the, all of the Chinese people. Liu, she is a bad person. She is on her own. Mm. So basically, the internal internet in China is roasting her because she makes Chinese look bad globally. But on a global level, people are saying all Chinese are like Liu. Dang. Which is this greedy woman, who, whether but, you agree but, with her or disagree then, with her. Clearly, like, they're not everybody's like Liu because the two guys did something good. Like, a lot of people are not highlighting what Fan and Xie did. Listen, they fronted the money. Now, here's the thing. Those guys, they did the right thing. And I think that they're good guys for going through the trouble, sacrificing their climb up to the summit in order to save her. You have to understand, people train for months and they save up for years just to do this thing. So right, it costs 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars to make the climb. So they never make it to the summit, right? They don't finish their mission. They don't finish their complete their mission. But here's my one thing is like, if you go out of your way to save somebody and do the right thing, you should not expect and you cannot expect them to pay you back exactly how much you expect like it's just it just doesn't work that way you have to do it out the goodness of your heart i'm saying that she shouldn't be greedy and she should pay him back but also those guys you know they got a little money it's almost like right. it is what it is you're saying when it comes to doing the right thing the math does not always equal out yeah and here's the thing guys nobody the sherpas they're all private security private contractors they're supposed to make sure that the person that they hire gets up there back down safely but they're not necessarily responsible for people outside of the group 
Yeah. So, I mean, I think that that is pretty much our summation of what happened on the mountain. The Sherpas got paid. You know, there was some stories, Andrew, of previous uh, stories where the Sherpas even saved a Malaysian guy without getting paid. Yeah. And so I, some of the, not all the Sherpas are like money motivated. I'm sure some are more than yeah, others. You yeah. Know? I'm sure there's stories of Sherpas trying to help out and then they end up dying while trying to give their life for free. I get it. It's so I think there's, it's not about the Sherpas wanting to I get mean, paid. It, it, isn't it just like any sort of civil service, Andrew? Firefighters don't work for free. Police officers don't work for free. Even the surgeon in the ER does not just save people for free all day, no, right? No, they no, no. They might do it on a medical mission overseas, right. but they don't do it when they're in their job in America, right? Exactly. Somebody's saying, uh, yeah, bargaining is a competitive sport in China. Maybe, you know, Fan and Xiu, you know, maybe uh, she was just playing hardball with the bargaining. Yo, what if Liu, the woman, turns back and wakes up from, like, being saved and be like, no, I wanted to die on Mount Everest. Why you save me? Like, that is what I wanted my life to be, and now you make me alive again. Right. Some people thought that Leo didn't pay the Sherpa, so they were like, man, I would have yeeted her off the mountain after that. Um, like we said, there's a lot of comments from around the world, Andrew. We're getting into the more macro negative China comments now, mm -hmm. Andrew, uh, that I think ultimately are the most interesting. Somebody said, Chinese food is huge, but the people still don't respect the people that much. Oh! What do you think of this? This is actually, to be honest, if you made me say, I think it's it's more nuanced than one sentence. If you made me say this is true or not, I almost want to say this is true. Yeah, I think it's tough, man, because there is a lot of Chinese people in the world. And I think there's a lot of good Chinese people, but we mostly hear about the bad ones. And it's because... And, and they fit the stereotype of the greediness, right? Right. Uh, because... But also, a lot of people don't talk about how, like, these restaurant owners who cook food for very cheap so that they make delicious Chinese food for you for, like, $7. With like, $1 margin, right? Do you thank them for doing their job? Because they're not making that much no, money No, no, you just it. get mad at them for not wanting to give you extra duck sauce for free. Yeah, exactly. So it's almost like a, you can't win unless, until Chinese people start creating all this content that makes people feel better about themselves so that it can balance out the negative news that people consume with the positive content that they consume about Chinese. But right now, a lot of people, they don't consume Chinese content, so they're not, so they only see the negative news. For sure. I would say that people in the West... And, and honestly, if all the articles were written properly and talking about how the dispute is actually between Fan Xie and the Lady Liu, I don't think this article goes viral in the West. I just don't right. think anybody cares. People are just like, oh, yeah, that's just between two Chinese people arguing over money. But because it looked like Liu stiffed the Sherpas, which are the poor Nepalese guys, obviously Nepal is a third world country, then it turned into like the greedy Chinese, just like the greedy government and the greedy citizens. Um... A lot of people were saying, Andrew, stories regarding China never get any nuanced interpretation because people want to go off the media headlines. The media headlines from the Western news sources have an incentive to make the article go viral, which is playing into the stereotypes. Exactly. Basically, if you can, if you're typing an article and you can just kind of write it a certain way to invoke a frenzy against a certain person, it's easy, bro. And it is easy. Yeah. It is easy, but no one's talking about how... Nope. Fan and Shea saved her life. Right. They gave up a bunch. Was that greedy for them? Yeah. And now, so what's happening now is that there's a lot of comments on the internet who, especially on the Chinese side, who were like, oh, this roast this girl, track her down, harass her, you know, like. Because right, she's journalist. making Chinese people look bad, but also reminding people Chinese internally within yeah. their country, probably of behaviors from the 50, 60, 70 year old, 80 year old generation of the more downside stories. But obviously, I'm not saying all 50, 60, 70, 80 year old uh, mainland Chinese are, are one way but there's an archetype that driven by the cultural revolution that they're ultra, ultra cheap and greedy even amongst themselves yeah. and to the outside world. For sure, for sure. And even Fawn and Shea have to come out and say, hey, listen, guys, I'm over it. She only paid us back $4,000. It's fine. Just don't worry about her. Don't bother her life. I'm done dealing with this. Right. They just want to move on with their lives, yeah. too. They don't want to be defined by this story for the rest of their lives. What do you think about these really macro kind of uh, harsh comments, Andrew, saying Chinese make all Chinese looking people look bad, whether they are Japanese or Koreans that would never act like this. Chinese always make all of us look bad. I think Chinese have some work to do. It's not that I think all Chinese people are bad. Of course, I think a lot of Chinese people are great. And, I, th I, and I think the great ones don't get credit for yeah. trying to counterbalance this, this stereotype. Yeah. But Perhaps what? Is it just because there's so many Chinese around the world? I, like, you got to think our population or like the population of Chinese is way, way many times ex Japan and Korea. You know what I mean? So 
and it's like uh, economic development curve is slower. It's behind. So you're getting like these hyperactive like villagers or gnomes or people who are, they're not bad people, but they have bad manners. And they're sort of like coloring the perception of the entire pool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just think that, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it, it's unfortunate the way that it's playing out. But I think there's a lot of incentive from the media and the news sources to spin stuff negatively towards China. So I'm saying like, whether it's picking up more on a viral negative story rather than a positive one, there's a lot of incentive. Uh, yeah. Or people might see the positive one. They're like, oh, not going to click on that one. Positive yeah. story from China. Oh, this negative greedy yeah. woman. Who's well, you, well, you start to take the, the positive for granted because the positive is just supposed to happen. Do you think that this went viral, particularly in China amongst the younger internet crowd because they're like, oh my gosh, she is going to make us all look bad. And when we go overseas, people will think we are all like Liu and then they will be mean to us or not help us if we're in trouble. Yeah, I mean, definitely, dude. There's, uh, I think the younger generation does have a little bit of pressure to go out there and help portray Chinese in a different way. And it's not going to all change just in one generation because things don't change that quickly, but it will be like a step-by-step thing you yeah know? for yeah. sure um anyway guys let us know what you think in the comment section below guys like we said the comment sections on these articles especially on the western side went all over the place i read actually some of the comments from the chinese side that were translated they went all over the place too obviously having different discussions let us know what you think in the comment section below from silly to serious hot pot boys always breaking it down until next time we out peace, peace.